Welcome everyone to our last virtual lab of the semester. Over the next several videos, we will be covering the female and male reproductive tracts. And this corresponds to the last two exercises in your lab manual, which are 28 and 29. Before we jump into content, I wanna talk a little bit about how to prepare for lab exam three. Third exam is coming up. It will be our last day of in-person lab. As usual, we will start 30 minutes past our regular start time. So that'll be 9.30 or 11.30, depending on your lab section. It will cover labs 19 through 26. So everything from our cardio lab, where we dissected the heart through the reproductive systems. As you're reviewing, I want you to think about models. I want you to think about histology. So we're using those human protein atlas and Yale histology websites to review. And I also don't want you to forget about the dissections that we did. So you will see dissected heart tissue on lab exam three. It will all be 100% multiple choice and you will have 75 seconds per station with one to two questions per station. If you have not turned in your lab manuals to me, whether you forgot or you had extenuating circumstances, uh, make sure those get to me by the end of the day on December 8th. That is your last possible chance to get credit for your lab manual. And then one final reminder, if you haven't filled it out yet and you have the time, I would really appreciate if you could complete the online course questionnaire, as that's one of the best ways for your instructors to hear your feedback. Uh, we're always trying to improve our methods and figure out what works and doesn't work for you. So please fill that out and share your thoughts if you have the availability. All right, so we're going to start off with some big concepts. And the first thing I want to talk about is homology between the female and, and the male reproductive tract. So this is our model. These images are available on Canvas. What we have on the left is the female reproductive tract. On the right, we have the male reproductive tract. So the main thing to note here is while these organs do look different, they are homologous. They're gonna have very similar functions or structure. In terms of external genitalia, the male reproductive tract has the scrotum and this corresponds to labia majora on the female tract. So scrotum is gonna be that outermost layer protecting the testes. On the female side, we're going to have two sets of labia uh, external lips that are protecting the internal organs. Each system has gonads. So the male version would be the testes. Female version is going to be the ovaries. And this is where our sex cells are being produced. Both systems have erectile tissue as well. So the penis is going to correspond with the clitoris, which is not visible from this perspective, this mid-sagittal view of the model. And there are additional muscles. For example, there is the ischiocavernosis muscle. Um, this helps to maintain erection in both systems. So you do not need to identify that on the model. I just want you to recognize that there are going to be a lot of parallels between these two systems. In this video, we'll start with the male reproductive tract. So once again, I want you to be really comfortable with this mid-sagittal view. This is how all of your model questions will be asked for the male tract. If we orient ourselves up here, we have our lumbar vertebrae. This is gonna be posterior. This is more anterior. So we've just cut everything in half down the middle. Externally, you wanna be comfortable identifying the penis and the scrotum. So the scrotum again is that kind of fibrous sac surrounding the internal testes and epididymis. Internally, we're going to have the testes. We're going to have this intricate set of tubes. This is your epididymis. And then we're going to have a tube called the vas deferens, which is transporting substances. What uh, you also want to identify are your accessory glands. So there are several glands in both the male and female tracts that are going to either produce secretory components or they're going to produce substances that help nourish our sex cells. One other thing to note with the male model, so this is a, a different view. Essentially, we have taken this part of the model away so that we can see some of the internal structures. So again, you still have got penis here, scrotum, a set of glands that we talk about here. And then the other thing I want you to note is the bladder. So we just talked about the bladder in our renal system lab. Um, this is your urinary bladder, and it is going to be connected to the urethra which in the male tract is going to travel for about 20 centimeters 
through the penis to its external orifice. A lot of people do confuse the bladder with other glands in the male tract. And the same thing for the female reproductive tract. Let me flip over here. So we're also going to have a bladder. In this case, in the female tract, the bladder is going to sit just anteriorly and just underneath the uterus. Make sure you're comfortable with that. Don't get the bladder confused with all of these other structures that we see here. Other things that tend to confuse students, if we switch back to our male model, sometimes we see these openings here and people think they're part of the reproductive tract. What we have is actually a cross section of our colon, our large intestine. So this is that really big opening that indicates this is the large intestine and not the small intestine. So sometimes people think that is the bladder, for example. So don't let that confuse you. Most posteriorly, we have the rectum and the anus. So this part is going to be connecting to the terminal part of our colon. And that is this entire system we see posteriorly. We really got a lot going on here. We have digestive system. We have a renal system with the bladder and the urethra. And then all of this stuff in between is going to be part of the reproductive tract. I want to focus your attention anteriorly now, and we'll talk about structures of the penis, an external organ. So we have erectile tissue in this structure that when filled with blood is going to help engorge the tissue or erect it. Running through the penis, we have again the urethra, this tube here. And we also have two types of tissue that make up the penis, corpus fungiosum. This is going to be the tissue surrounding the urethra. So it's a little lighter on here. It looks like we've got maybe gray dots on this model. So all of this tissue directly in contact with the urethra is going to be corpus spongiosum. We also have the corpus cavernosa, which is a little more external. And it's it looks striated here. So it's slightly more red on our models. And this is a pair of just spongy tissues that are containing most of the blood of the penis. And so this is going to be that main erectile tissue. Other things we can see, we have the head here, which is called the glands. So make sure you're comfortable with all of those structures. What we cannot see on this model is a nice view of the scrotum. So typically you will be asked about more internal structures we switch back here. So typically you'll be asked about the testes and the epididymis more often than the scrotum. But functionally, they are going to regulate skin temperature. There is a muscle that is going to contract to allow the scrotum to raise or lower depending on if we want to increase the temperature or decrease the temperature. And that is important for regulating the environment in which sperm are produced. We're not going to worry about layers of the scrotum since it's not visible on our model but we do wanna focus on these internal structures here. So again, we have the testes. It's gonna be this white structure here with kind of these squiggly bits running through it. We'll talk about what those mean when we get to histology. And then wrapping around, we have this really convoluted tube here that kind of looks like it's folding back on itself. That is going to be the epididymis. If we go back to the testes, their function is to produce sperm and a sex hormone, testosterone. Whereas our epididymis is actually the site of sperm maturation. So the sperm are produced in the testes. They're going to move over to the epididymis for the site of maturation. And that is also where they're stored until they are released. The way the sperm get released is they have to travel from the epididymis into this continuation called the vas deferens. And this is just a little thin tube that connects the epididymis all the way to the urethra. And that is how sperm is going to originate in the testes and be transported to an external environment. If you go on to take cadaver lab or any higher level anatomy courses, you will also discuss the spermatic cord. So that's not really testable for lab. But one thing to know is that the vas deferens is going through a bundle called the spermatic cord. So it's going to run through here, but it also is joined. You can see here we have some cardiovascular stuff. There's also going to be lymph vessels and a couple nerves that run through this spermatic cord. So it's really a busy area. All of that is going to help supply and innervate the testes and the epididymis. And then 
it's going to form a plexus of veins as well that is wrapping all the way around the spermatic cord here. So it's a really busy area. We don't talk about it too much in this class, uh, but keep in mind that the vas deferens is going to be running through that spermatic cord with a lot of other important vessels. The last macroscopic structures we want to look at are going to be accessory glands. These things are generally supporting the production and growth of sperm. So a lot of them are either going to make contributions, secretory contributions, or they're going to be providing nutritious substances for the sperm. We're going to have three main glands. The first is the seminal vesicles. And these guys are found really close to the bladder. So maybe if we switch over to our other image, you can see this. There we go. First, we want to find our bladder, which again is connected to the urethra. That's one good way to orient yourself. And just on the back of it, just posteriorly, we're going to find the seminal vesicles. And these are a pair of glands. Now that we've located our bladder, I'm going to switch back to our other view. And this structure that you see here has kind of a honeycomb shape. This is going to be that seminal vesicle. And all it's doing is producing a, a sugary fluid. It actually contains fructose, and that is going to be a nourishing secretion for sperm. Our second gland is the prostate gland. So let's switch back. The prostate gland is just underneath the bladder. This is going to be our prostate gland. It's, it's labeled number five on the model. So you can see the urethra actually runs along the prostate gland. So we actually call this region of the urethra the prostatic urethra. And this is really important because the prostate gland is producing semen. And that's going to be a combination of sperm cells as well as this fluid produced by the, mostly by the prostate gland. That's going to make the main components of semen. The important thing there is that the uh, the vas deferens is contributing sperm at this point in that semen production process. So that is our prostate gland. And then lastly, we have the bulbourethral glands. Bulbourethral glands are going to be found just inferior to the prostate gland. So they're not nicely labeled on our model, but we would expect to find them kind of outlined in white here. This is that area of the bulbourethral glands. And they are going to produce contributions to that semen that, it, that has been mainly produced in the prostate gland. So they're just contributing a lubricating fluid, all of which is going to be dumped into the urethra. And that is all for macroscopic structures. So next we'll take a look at the female model, and then we'll wrap up with histology.